Welcome to our worship at Grace. Grace is here to bring God's grace to your life. We want you to know the depth of God's love and mercy and grace for you. In fact, for the next six weeks, the, the framing of our time in worship will be called Live Deep. Now, this is um, a series in the first letter of John so often we can live such surface and shallow lives. And God's call is to go deep, to live deep. And today, it is about live deep with a deep joy. Pray God's blessing upon your worship today. God gathers us and calls us together. And so let's begin our worship. Welcome. We are still rejoicing in the resurrection. And so we begin in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in, in it. it. Christ is risen. He, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the Easter proclamation that still rings in our ears and on our hearts that you are risen. You are risen indeed. And may we join in alleluias because you live. And because you live, you bring to our lives a deep joy. So as we gather for worship, fill us with the hope that is ours, the faith that you give, in the joy that you bring because you live. Make our joy complete. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Jesus Christ is risen today.
And now we join together in worship in a time of confession. And this is where deep joy lives, knowing you are loved and forgiven. You'll notice in our time of confession that it comes right out of 1 John, this letter that we'll be using in our uh, focus for this series, Live Deep, our time of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But But if if we we confess confess our sins, sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We We have have not loved you with our whole heart. We have have not loved loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you and for His sake, forgives all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Forgiven and free. Let's sing our song of praise. Mighty to save. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. Kindness of Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered. Can we now 
turn our hearts and minds to God's Word. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 32. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possession was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was, to, it was distributed to anyone who had need. Our second reading, the epistle lesson, comes from 1 John chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 1, and it's the basis for the message today. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim it to you, the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes to us from the book of John, chapter 20, beginning to read at verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands inside. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Several years ago, Chris and I had a very wonderful opportunity to take a very special cruise. She, along, she and I, along with our friends, three other couples, chartered a 75-foot sailboat to cruise the British Virgin Islands for eight days. To say that it was beautiful would be an understatement. 
breathtaking, I think, would be a better way to describe the experience all around. Sometimes we were the only boat in sight, often anchoring for the night in some secluded cove with beautiful white sand beaches and deep blue crystal clear water. We visited many islands and daytime activities, aside from eating and drinking, included beach bocce ball, snorkeling, scuba diving. And there's one particular dive that stands out in my mind. We dove a site called Alice in Wonderland, and it was on the southwest side of Ginger Island. It's a 12-meter coral wall that opens up into a fantasy world of bright and vibrant coral formations, teeming with brightly colored tropical fish of all shapes and sizes. And when you first get in the water and look down from the surface, it looked truly amazing. But it was only when you went deep that you were able to experience the true beauty and the full joy of swimming through the coral canyons, able to be a part of it, to see this amazing underwater world up close and personal. And I think sometimes in life, we need to go deep to get the full effect. Life is like And the surface doesn't always give us the full picture. There was a movie that came out in 2001 called Shallow Hell. I don't know if any of you remember it. But in the movie, Jack Black is cast as Hal, who on the advice of his dying father will pursue only beautiful women that embody female perfection. Never saw nor cared about their inner beauty, what might lie deep inside. He focused on what only could be seen on the outside. There was absolutely no depth to his relationships. And I think that in life, we all crave deep, meaningful, joy-filled relationships. Deep is good. Deep implies substance and character, strength. There seems to be a genuineness felt about that. Spring is here in Michigan. We start now the routine. We fertilize our lawns and irrigate our lawns and gardens to develop deep, strong roots. We cheer our sports teams with a deep bench, one that will take us well into the postseason. Deep is good. Now, if this holds true for most people in a general sense, it would seem to me that it would be true, especially true, for people who call themselves Christians. No one wants to be shallow, no one wants to have a shallow faith that with no substance or depth where the object of faith is anything but Christ. Christians want to have a deep, spirit-filled, meaningful, joy-filled relationship with Jesus. So over the next six weeks, we're going to take a look at what it means to live deep, to go deeper into our relationship with Christ and what that looks like as we nurture our relationships with others and live out our faith in God's only Son, our risen Savior. When we think about growing in faith and developing a profound understanding of Jesus and who He is, we're going to turn our attention to this first letter of John. Written by John, the last apostle, it was a circular letter more than likely intended to be sent to and read at various churches, possibly in Asia Minor. And we see the essence of John's letter in chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. And the message translation would say it like this. Stay with what you've heard from the beginning, the original message. Let it sink into your life. If what you heard from the beginning lives deeply in you, you will live deeply in both the Son and the Father. It's a profound yet simple book in the sense that it doesn't cover 
a wide range of topics, but focuses on a few simple truths and hammers them home. This first letter of John gives us a clear picture of what a deep life in Christ looks like and why really knowing Jesus is the most important piece. To know deep, lasting joy, we have to truly know Christ. Let's begin by taking a look at these first four verses in chapter 1. And I would like to use the translation from the message. I just love the way that it reads. From the very first day, we were there, taking it all in. We heard it with our own ears. We saw it with our own eyes. We verified it with our own hands. The word of life appeared right before our eyes. We saw it happen. And now we're telling you in most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredibly this. The infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We saw it. We heard it. And now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. And when John was writing this letter, he was writing to a church at a time when false teachers were drawing the new Christians away from the truth of the gospel which they had first been preached. The first thing that he wanted to tell them, that Jesus Christ actually lived. By the time the letter was written, it had been about 50 years since Jesus had walked among the people. Not only that, But the first generation of believers who may have seen Jesus have now passed on. And John was one of the last living apostles. So he is writing to Christians who have never encountered or personally seen Christ, but have heard about him from someone who did or from someone who did who did. You know how that goes. People have questions, though. Did he really exist? Did all of the things that we have heard really happen? John is now addressing those people who had those very questions. It's easy to ask questions. They weren't there. They were going by what they heard. And now some of the false teachers were changing that message, denying the divinity of Jesus or questioning his humanity, confusing the people, drawing them away from the truth of the gospel. Now in the opening dialogue, John sets the record straight. Jesus Christ really lived. We heard him with our own ears. We saw him with our own eyes. We touched him with our hands. We saw his miracles, multiplying the loaves of bread and fish. We saw him heal the sick. We saw him calm the storm when we were so fearful. We saw him raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. We heard and followed his teaching. John is expressing not only his amazement at walking with Jesus, but he's expressing the deep joy that he felt in the presence of Jesus. Jesus changed lives, make no mistake about it. And John now wants his hearers to know that Jesus didn't just live. He changed not only their lives as they walked with him, but the lives of those that he encountered along the way. What John is trying to say is that not only did they experience Jesus through their physical senses, he shaped their lives through words. Words that continue to echo in their minds. Words that continue to feed us today. John is saying that through his very real experience with Christ, that Christ just wasn't another person that lived, but Christ has become his very life. In the opening verses, John doesn't say that Jesus is the word about life, 
but he says that Jesus is life itself. And he's anxious to tell his hearers that to know Christ is to experience life to the fullest, and to know him is to truly live. As Christians, even though we haven't personally seen him, we too have life in Christ. It begins with our baptism where we're claimed by Christ to be his own. Our life in Christ is strengthened as we live in his word. We hear it. We live it. We share it. Our life is nourished as we come to his table to taste and see that the Lord is good. And what John is telling us is that hearing, seeing, and touching Christ is for him life itself the life that God has in store for all of his children, including you and me. We still see Christ at work in our lives and in our world today. Just look around, we see his handiwork in creation. We witness his healing works all around us. We see his people who are called called to go out into the world, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, and sharing his gospel message of hope with those who might not yet know him and have no hope. We, God's people, are the means by which he bestows his grace and mercy on all people. And now John wants to make his joy complete by sharing his experience with his hearers and with us. Listen to verses 3 and 4 again. We saw it. We heard it. And now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Our motive for writing this is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. It's not enough for John to experience this life himself. He wants others to share in the experience with him, to have fellowship with Jesus. He even implies that unless he can share it with them, his experience will be less than complete. He wants them to have the same relationship with Jesus that he has. He wants them to experience the same joy that he has in knowing that Christ is his life. The Apostle John knew Christ well. In his first letter, he is telling us that we too can have a close, intimate, joy-filled relationship with Jesus Christ. Here in this book, we have the direct eyewitness testimony of someone who walked and talked with Jesus. His testimony is a historical reality. But how does that apply to us? helps us to see that Jesus came here, the very Son of the living God, to have a relationship with us. And this is based solely upon His grace, His mercy, and His love. So many times we feel that Jesus is distant and far from us, certainly unconcerned with our daily struggles, our issues, and our concerns. But John is telling us that Jesus is right here with us, both in the simple and mundane parts of our lives, as well as the complex and soul-wrenching trials. John testifies as a personal witness. He tells of his personal experience that God became flesh and dwelt among us. He walked the earth alongside of John and now, He walks alongside of each and every one of us. The book of John is a book of love and of deep joy. It explains the fellowship that we have with each other and with Christ. It differentiates between mere happiness, which is temporary and fleeting, and lasting and true joy. May you take the words written here by John to heart the true love, commitment, fellowship, and deep joy that we all long for 
is yours in Jesus Christ. Amen. We now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the time of our worship when we acknowledge Christ as our life and all that we have in our life is a blessing from his gracious goodness to us. And so let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the blessings received by you, who is our life. May our lives use these blessings that others might know the blessing of who you are as a risen Savior. Use our offerings to bring joy to others in our care for those in need and for those who need to know more fully the depths of your love and grace and mercy. We want that for our families, for our community, and for our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now the wonderful privilege and joy of coming to the Lord in a time of prayer. These, the prayers of our church, which are intended to kind of you know, so often our prayer life, at least maybe I can just maybe speak for myself, seems to kind of be about, uh, you know, a, a little more kind of focused in. But the prayers of the church just broaden our prayers into even a worldwide focus. And so it is a privilege to have these prayers together. With that said, let's pray. Heavenly Father, by the resurrection of your Son, life appeared. United together in faith, deepen our joy in your presence, now and forever. And Almighty God, you have declared peace between God and man in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Receive our thanks. May our lives and witness share the good news of the free forgiveness of sins upon all sinners. And merciful Father, as your people are united in the common life and love of our Savior, grant that we would share that life and love with those who are in need. And Heavenly Father, your peace flows from the risen and glorified wounds of Christ through your church and into the lives of all your faithful people. Would you bless and direct Christian parents that your forgiveness would be freely shared in homes, that each family would live together in your peace. And Almighty God, you appoint rulers and officials for the sake of order and peace, bless those you have placed in authority over us in federal, state, and local governments. Give to them the desire to serve with integrity and honor and to work for the benefit of all. And Lord God, we praise your son's resurrection from the dead and draw strength from his ascension before you where he ever stands for us as our high priest. So graciously receive our prayers, prayers of intercession for those who need 
you. And Lord, we especially pray for Mike Silver, who will be going in for surgery this coming Wednesday. Lord, would you be with him? Would you watch over him? And we pray deeply for his healing. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace and for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and the Holy Sacraments, that through them we may have comfort and forgiveness and deep joy. So grant us your Holy Spirit that we would deeply believe and trust in your word and that through the Holy Sacrament you would establish our faith day by day until at last we obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we continue in our worship with our closing song, Wonder of the Cross.
now receive God's benediction as we go our way living in the resurrection in deep joy. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.